Narration speculative in French translates for me into the English speculative fabulation. And the difference matters because of the connotation of the word narrative in English is not as open as narration is in French. And speculative narrative, narrative spe the spe speculative narrative in English has already been occupied by a particular branch of literary critical theory, which I am not very drawn to. Uh, there are some thinkers and writers there that I think are, you know, it's not like I'm against it in some way, but it's not what I mean. Because what I mean by uh, speculative fabulation, or narration speculative in French, but not in English, okay, is much more closely tied to the everyday storytelling practices of, um, of, of storytellers, you know, who aren't all writers, uh, who aren't all professionals, who aren't all, um, you know, maybe the ways uh, mothers tell story, mothers and fathers tell, tell stories to their children, or the way uh, someone tells the story of their life to a reporter, or the way um, an Emily Carr writes, um, you know, you know, writes her stories, or I think, or the way Ursula Le Guin does does her work. I think of speculative fabulation as this um, uh, this fabulating, this making, this these, this this uh, fabulation, uh, the, the fable as a place. One of my former graduate students, Martha Kenny, talked about wild facts. Facts that are not that won't hold still. Uh, wild facts inhabit fables, and the fable is a really important uh, form. And fabulation is the making of fables and speculative fabulation, not narrative as it's been domesticated in literary theory, but the fabulation, the worlding, which is often full of animals and full of of. Uh, critters who maybe d don't really exist, I don't know, full of uh, creatures of the imagination, um, full of, of uh, children and animals and creatures of the imagination and impossible worlds, but also full of adults, full of the, the serious narrative, uh, uh, speculative fabulation, uh, science fiction, speculative feminism, fantasy, speculative fantasy of an Ursula Le Guin. Um, so, uh, for me, SF is absolutely a critical germ, uh, seed, uh, erup you know, point of eruption of my own work uh, as a, you know, I'm a scholar. I've made my living as a scholar. I live in this house because I was paid as a scholar. You know, I, I would be foolish, stupid to disown it. That is my profession. Uh, and I practice my profession as a fabulator. Uh, and by that, I do not mean I don't tell the truth, you know, because I care, among, among other things, I care about what's a fact and what isn't, how it holds together or does not. Um, I, th I think, th I believe that teaching intelligent design in a biology class in high school is a kind of child abuse. You know, I think evolutionary theory is, is uh, uh, you know, I will enforce it with the law if necessary. <laughs> in, 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 by which I mean I will I will take part in curriculum struggles with the publishers or with the school districts. So I will fight for something that I think is so. Uh, some way, some ways of life, and not others. And I don't think that is instead of being a fabulator. I think that this is about taking fabulation, speculative fabulation, seriously. Most of my biologist friends don't, you know, really get very upset with that language. They really want you to be, f you know, uh, for science is the truth and this other stuff isn't, and you're talking about fabulation like that is, is really, you know, wrong-headed, really crazy, <laughs> you know, and I say, no, 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 we need to talk about uh, speculative fabulation and science fact in the same SF figure. So that's how I use it.